Hi and welcome to The Vine. This is video number 21. We're looking at chapter 20 in Greg Ogden's Discipleship Essentials and chapter 20 is on the church. And we're in front of a church, not the church that most of you watch this video go to. It is, it is a different church. We're here because we're asking the question that Greg asks is, what is the church? What is the purpose? Why are we here? What do we do? Um, uh, Greg uses 1 Corinthians 12 to talk about the church, and that, of course, is, the, is Paul's famous passage about the church being being like the body of Christ. That we all have different parts, you know, uh, in the church. Uh, some people are the hands, and some people are the feet, and some people are the ears, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, the uh, voice, um, and um, um, uh, we are all differently gifted in those ways. And that, that of course, is only is only really part of the part of the issue. And um, uh, the church uh, today is really sort of wondering, so who are we? What is, what is our role? And how do we take all of these gifts that God has given us and use them and, 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 and what, is, what is the point? The church uh, comes from a Greek word uh, that is uh, ekklesia, and ekklesia means called out. And the church is called out of the world uh, uh, to, be, to, be, to be different from the world, to be, to be a witness for uh, Jesus Christ. And when Greg is talking about the different parts of, of the body uh, and, and uh, referring to Paul, Jesus Christ is the head of the head of the church, meaning he is he is our leader. He is the one who is the head. The leader is not the pastor or the elders or, or any staff member. The leader, the true leader of the church is, is Jesus Christ. And just as Jesus uh, said, my kingdom is not of this world, the church is supposed to be not of this world. We are supposed to be uh, called out to be to be different. And so, uh, what does that what does that look like? Let me mention um, a few things uh, to expand upon uh, upon what upon what Greg has talked about. First of all, when we talk about gifts, the church is supposed to practice what I would call radical teamwork. That we are all working together, and that the sum of the parts is greater than the whole that we are all called to play a role, we are all called to do something, and we believe that there is a synergy by the power of the Holy Spirit that drives us and moves us so that we are uh, diminished with the loss of any of those of those gifts. But it works together in some spectacular way that we can't even uh, uh, describe. Uh, number two, uh, we are called to live by our own code of ethics, and uh, we are called uh, to live in a totally different way. Uh, a, one of the ways we think about the church is just as was as God's chosen people living in Israel were told to be different from all the nations around them. Uh, we're told to be different from, from from the world around us, and so there's been some uh, some confusion, I would say, in the church and outside of the church about us holding people outside of the church to ethical standards that God has called us to. Now, it's not to me those standards are not good for them to have, but. Um, but, but we need to be most concerned about how are we living our lives? How are we practicing our faith? And holding ourselves to uh, uh, rigid biblical standards about, about, about you know, how to live. And not just talking about, you know, don't do this or don't do that, the typical um, um, uh, ethics and morals we talk about. We're also talking about loving each other and caring for each other and, uh, and having compassion for the uh, you know, downtrodden and, not, and not, not wanting society to do it to do it for us. The third thing that is really unique to, to the church as well is that Jesus has promised that uh, he will preserve the church, he will defend the church, and that even the gates of hell, we are built upon a rock, and the gates of hell will, will not prevail against us. And so currently in society and, and in the church, there's a lot of hand-wringing, especially in the church, about, well, what is, what is going to happen to the church? The church is declining, the church is going down, there are not as many people going to church, the church seems weaker than it's ever been, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, there may be some, some good questions in there, but I think, I think as Christians we can rest secure in the knowledge that, that the church is going to prevail uh, and, and the church is going to be used in the world and, and, and Jesus is going to uh, preserve us and, and keep us and prosper us as we are faithful to him. And so, um, so, we're, so we're really freed from fear in all those things too. And then, and then fourth, and, and finally, what is unique about the church is the church is the unique witness to Jesus Christ in the world. And we talked about that during, during, during the last chapter. But if we don't share Jesus with, with the world, who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Uh, uh, Jesus doesn't need us to do that. He can do it himself. 
uh, he said, if my disciples don't uh, share, even the very stones themselves will cry out. So he doesn't need us, but he privileges us to do it. And so, so the unique message we have been given is Jesus Christ and his salvation and his gospel. And as the church is faithful to that mission and that task and that duty, Jesus grows us and prospers us. And so, so, so we're really called to do that in the world. And um, uh, as we are faithful to that task, we're going to see we're, we're we're going to see flourishing. We don't get sidetracked into other other, other efforts and venues. So, um, hope you enjoy uh, chapter chapter twenty. It's a it's a great chapter, and it's a really relevant one for us here today. As as we have a lot of questions about what is the church and what is the church all about. Thanks for watching.